Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Juice Manji, Big Lechuga, Big Husband Maine, and I'm back with the Pulse. Alright, so this is our end of year holiday edition of the Pulse. I got my uh, a little eggnog and whiskey drink, or any brown liquor drink with eggnog. We call that a Kardashian. Mm -mm. New York Giants Cup, feeling festive. Uh, happy to be back. Uh, broadcasting to you. Um, so the theme of this episode, you know, it's gonna be it's the end of year. Um, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of countdowns of, of things that they fucked with this year in 2014. Um, but what I'm gonna give to you is my five favorite sports moments, my five favorite music pieces of music, um, albums, and my five favorite pickups um, that came out this year. My fa my five favorite 2014 releases that I uh, that I picked up this year and share that with y'all and um, you know and I'll also we'll also talk some some NFL playoffs now that we're getting into it um, give you give you my thoughts how I think the playoffs are gonna play out um, but enough of that let's jump right off into sports uh, playoffs are looking looking good you have you have some teams really peaking now no one no one more so than the Seahawks um, right now that's who I think is going to take it um, before the season, I had Packers, Broncos in the Super Bowl. Right now, I'm leaning Seahawks, and I want to say Steelers, um, or the Patriots. You know, it's just weird when uh, you know they didn't really play last week, but they have been the strongest team in the AFC. <sighs> I'm gonna stick with Seahawks, Steelers, man. I think the Steelers, I think the Steelers can do it. Um, you know, I. I just feel like Big Ben is due. You could the same thing could be said for Brady, but I feel like it's going to be one of those two teams. Uh, the Broncos, something's wrong with Peyton. He's not he's not quite right. So I have a hard time picking them uh, to get there this year. So I'm going to go with Seahawks. Final pick: Seahawks over the Steelers in the Super Bowl. Mm. All right. So now I want to share with you kind of my five favorite um, things this season for me. My personal stuff, not like the five best things in sports, but the things that like brought me the most joy as a sports fan this year. My number five favorite thing that I've seen uh, in sports this year is just Marshawn Lynch everything. Um, I'm really, really happy to see him just uh, kill it this year, in spe especially in light of um, you know the, the early reports in the season that he wasn't going to be coming back. Um, to the Seahawks after next season, you know, the holdout thing didn't really go as planned for him, so I really, the running back position is one that I admire very much, and it's awesome for me to see a running back leading his team, being the dynamic playmaker on his team, the guy who kind of got his offense going, um, and then, you know, the defending Super Bowl champion is now peaking because Marshawn Lynch, um, really carried that offense when they didn't have a whole lot of rhythm um, you know so it's especially after having traded Percy Harvin and everything so um, you know that's been really awesome um, number four for me is um, it's two things tied together it's the resurgence of Matt Kemp who was my favorite one of my favorite Dodger players ever um, and then also to see him get traded and I know that sounds funny but um, I'm really happy with what Andrew Friedman, who is the new, basically runs the show for the Dodgers, and Farhan Zaidi, the new GM, so they're like the, the new brain trust for the Dodgers. I really like what they did, even though it included trading Matt Kemp. I like that they're making the team more defensive oriented, um, you know, in a more balanced lineup as opposed to, you know, just having the, you know, having Puig, uh, Kemp, and Gonzalez in the middle of the lineup. I like that we have, you know, Rollins and Howie Kendrick and you know it and Yatamani Grandal at catcher. We're getting good we're gonna get production out of positions that you don't that they hadn't gotten a lot of production from in the past, like second base, um, shortstop because Hanley wasn't very good last year, and catcher. So I feel like we have a much more balanced lineup and that's something I'm looking forward to. And then I was just happy to see Kemp reestablish himself as one of the better hitters in baseball over the second half of last season and uh, you know I wish him the best in in, uh, in San Diego, except when they're playing the Dodgers. My number three favorite sports thing, sports occurrence, sports story of 
2014 would have to be um, the Lakers drafting Julius Randle. Um, throughout the NCAA tournament, he was my favorite player to watch. Uh, I, he really, he really changed my opinion of him um, because it was clear to me that not only is he a supremely talented and athletic player, but he's a high motor guy, he's a high effort guy, which you don't you don't often see that combination um, of high effort, just ridiculously high motor, high effort, and incredible talent. Um, so I'm, you know, the bummer, the bummer jam of it all is that he, uh, he got hurt in his first NBA pro game and is going to miss the entire season. Um, but the silver lining to that is that Lakers are pretty bad, and we might get to keep our top five pick in the 2015 draft. Um, Basically, if it's top five pick, we keep it. If not, it goes to Phoenix. So, um, you know, if, if the misfortune of this year and the terrible basketball of this year results in something like uh, Carl Towns or Jahil Okafor paired with Julius Randle or Emmanuel Mudiay or any of the top prospects, I'm pretty, uh, future's looking, will be looking up for us and, and I'll feel pretty good about it. Number two would have to be the dominant and historic season by Clayton Kershaw. Um, you know, he's, he's right up there, he's, he's kind of cementing his legacy right up there with Sandy Koufax as uh, the greatest Dodger pitcher ever, and he's just, he's just been historically dominant, and he is, you know, despite the struggles in the playoffs the last two years, I mean, he's still the greatest uh, pitcher of this generation. Um, I think, you know, I think it, he's going to get through it. I think our, our recent, the Dodgers' recent acquisitions in the bullpen, um, you know, will alleviate some of his playoff struggles because a lot of the, a lot of the times he's he's going, he's killing it, and then you know he starts to you know lose a little, you know lose a little gas, and uh, you know due to the Dodgers having a shit bullpen, they leave him out there, and then he gets lit up like a Christmas tree. Um, you know, I'm hoping he he battles those demons. Uh, you know, Peyton Manning eventually did, um, and I'm hoping Kershaw can have a similar. Uh, career arc except you know not having two Super Bowl losses after the first win um, or two World Series losses um, down the road I hope I hope his uh, his playoff woes are behind him but it doesn't take away you know the way the season ended um, and the fact that the Giants won the World Series for me doesn't diminish how amazing uh, it was watching him dominate all year it was, it was truly one of the best individual seasons I've ever seen in any sport um, so for that, that makes it my number two. And my number one sports uh, story occurrence this year has to be Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, you guys know I'm a Giants fan. Got my little Giants cup here. Got all my Giants shit. Uh, the season wasn't very good for us. Went six and ten. Um, but my oh my, did we unearth a talent? Uh, we drafted Beckham with a 13th pick, and he's probably going to win Rookie of the Year uh, offensive. And um, he just had, holy shit! I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen a better stretch. You know, the, save for a couple of guys, you know, a couple monstrous seasons, maybe Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson. I don't think I've seen a receiver play a better stretch of 12 games um, than what Odell Beckham Jr. just did. I mean, he's in, you know, it, it, you're, you're splitting hairs at that point. But he, the way he played these last 12 games, because he didn't play the first quarter of the season, um, you know, it was just remarkable. Uh, it's it's up there in terms of just, wow, uh, with, you know, like I said, Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson, when they first kind of broke out. Um, you know, and Antonio Brown's been killing it this year, too. He's been, you know, from beginning to end of the season, he's been the best receiver in the NFL. Um, but Odell Beckham Jr. It has been just exciting to watch. Even when, you know, I knew that the Giants season was done and they weren't going to be any good, he was must watch, you know, and then he also made arguably the greatest catch uh, in terms of degree of difficulty, obviously significance of the regular season game that they ended up losing to Dallas, but just the, the difficulty and the amazingness of that catch is unfuckwittable. Uh, so number one, the thing that got me most hyped uh, from my sports teams, or just sports in general this year, was Odell Beckham Jr. We're gonna talk music, we're gonna talk my five favorite albums of the year. Um, I'm not gonna do mixtapes. It becomes too much. Um, you know, we all like mixtapes, but it's hard to evaluate them mixing them with albums. I'm just gonna do studio albums. Number five, 
I'm gonna have to go with Logic under pressure. I really like this album. Um, you know, people will compare him to Macklemore. I don't really see it. I think it's because he's a whitish fellow. He's mixed. But I think that's really the only comparison because he can really rap his ass off. Um, and just the, the music, you know, he did, did, he made an album that was well composed, well put together. Um, so I gotta fuck with it. Uh, if you haven't, if you haven't heard it, listen to it. Uh, under Pressure by Logic. Very strong album. Um, Number four, let's go with, um, I'm going to have to go with Run the Jewels 2, Killer Mike and LP. I uh, love that album. Um, just, it, it's such an odd pairing that if you asked me, you know, five, eight years ago, if I could see Killer Mike and LP working together, I would have said hell no. Um, but it works so well. Uh, so if you haven't fucked with that album, I highly recommend it. Uh, Run the Jewels 2. Um, my third favorite album of the year is going to have to be Catalactica by Big Crit. Um, it's good to see Crit kind of get back to what he does best after a lackluster uh, major label debut with his um, first album with Def Jam where it was kind of, it was clear that he was succumbing to the pressures and the influences of trying to make a studio album as opposed to just making a project like he had done on all his amazing free albums, mixtapes, whatever you want to call them. Um, so this is Crit getting back to Crit, and I couldn't be happier. So number three is Catalactica by Big Crit. Uh, number two, my number two favorite album uh, of this year has got to be uh, Piñata by Freddie Gibbs and, uh, and Mad Lib, one of my favorite producers, one of my favorite rappers, uh, getting together and making just a, an amazing, amazing album. Uh, just, it's, it's, it's just, just that pure hip hop, um, and not in like the it just it, you know, Gibbs is your quintessential classic gangster rapper going in over Mad Lib's production, primo. Um, and then number one, my favorite album of the year is uh, Black Messiah by D'Angelo. Came out a couple weeks ago, and my God, I'm a huge D'Angelo fan. If you guys didn't know, um, a lot of people are, but you know, as am I, and to wait 15 years since his last album and it have him come back and make an album that was so good it's like he never left. Remarkable. Um, and you know, D'Angelo to me is like genreless. He transcends, you know, he's basically like, he's, he's distilled black, he's like the distilled, what you get at the end of like, of, of just the pure distillation process of just black music. He's just, he, he's funk, he's soul, he's R&B. Uh, he's hip hop. He's everything, uh, all in one. It, you know, he is the he is the personification of of black music to me. Um, and he made the best album of the year. I could listen to that. I've been listening to that uh, nonstop since it came out. So, number one, Black Messiah by D'Angelo. All right, now let's get into what I assume you guys wanted to see most, given that this is primarily a sneaker channel. Uh, my top five pickups of the year. Um, these are pickups that came out this year. You know, sure I picked up some old stuff, but I want to talk about what's going on now. Um, so let's get into it. Oh! First, we'll go with the Kobe 9 Low Elite Beethoven. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description. Uh, this is just so clean. So, so clean, um, you know. Can't, black and white fly knit is kind of unfuckwittable. And uh, the shoe is that. And the Kobe 9 might be my favorite aesthetically, not necessarily to wear because it's not as comfortable as some past models, but it's not uncomfortable. Um, but the Kobe 9 Elite Low, the fly knit, might be my favorite shit. Um, my, might be my favorite Kobe silhouette. Um, it's just amazing, and you guys know I like fly knit. So, Number five. Number four is the Ronnie Fog Asics Gelite 5, the Sage. Um, I didn't do a video on these, this was when I was uh, like in hiding, hiatus or whatever. Um, but man, the material on the shoe, this, uh, this shoe is like the cousin, the flourish cousin of the uh, Volcanoes from last year to me. Like this is gonna be the uh, the one 
the, the, the Ronnie Feig collab from this year that kind of takes off. Um, you know, some of them, there's always a couple, less than there used to be because numbers are going up, but there's always going to be a couple that, you know, kind of become delayed classics because, you know, the market kind of adjusts and then once the pairs start to dry up, then prices go fucking crazy. This is, to me, going to be that. The, uh, the, Ronnie shoe, the Ronnie shoe from 2014 that does that. It's just, uh, material selection's awesome. He put a lot of materials that he hadn't used before on the shoe and the colors are beautiful. Uh, just kind of a, just an amazing runner. Sage July 5. Alright, number three is the Air Max Day Air Max 1. Uh, I love how they put the Volt on this kind of faded uh, Volt on the midsole to give it like a kind of a new vintage look. Um, they use better materials on this than they use on most Air Maxes, these Air Max 1s these days. And um, it's just a classic colorway. And it's just kind of right on time. I like the, the kind of vintage, uh, kind of yeah, off whitish laces and, and just everything about the shoe. So, Air Max Day, Air Max 1. Number two, the Nike SB Lance Mountain Air Jordan 1. Just the concept of the shoe, everything about it is fucking awesome. Um, I love the uh, Statue of Liberty, Liberty Nike SB and the concept behind it. So anytime they kind of do this uh, this idea where you know the shoe changes as you wear it is awesome. I like that they did the mismatch thing, um, and, you know, and I'm still still trying to cop the white pair. But this is the pair that I wanted more, um, and it's the one that I ended up getting um, first. But it's too clean, materials are on point, um, and you know, Jordan One is classic, and this is a mis little little extra flair with the mismatch and everything. So. Lance Mountain Air Jordan 1 SB. And number one for me, now this wasn't technically a release shoe, but it went up on Nike ID and sold out like one. Um, so I'm gonna go with the multicolor low Kobe 9 Flyknit Elite. Um, this shoe is just awesome. Uh, the details on the multicolor, I'm sure you guys have seen videos or seen plenty of these, but they are just unbelievable. Really, really like this shoe. Um, you know, kind of served as a consolation prize for me uh, since I didn't get the masterpiece eyes. Uh, I carded them on Nike and it was a crazy day. The shit crashed and, and I wasn't able to get them. Um, and now uh, the prices are ridiculous on them, but I got these. And these mo this more than makes up for it because I'll wear these a lot more given that they're lows. And um, and you guys know I love my IDs to be able to add my own little personal touch. Um, so yeah, this is my favorite release. So we got two Kobe 9s. On there, um, but I just, you know, I just love. Like I said, I really love the Kobe Nine Low Elite. Probably my favorite new silhouette in a while. Um, so that just about does it. It's good to be back, chopping it up with you guys. Uh, it's just good to be back doing videos with you guys, uh, sharing interests, because uh, that's what we, that's what we're all here for. Um, I wish you, I hope you guys have a very happy new year. Hope you guys. I want to wish you all a belated Merry Christmas. Um, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and I will catch you on the next vid. Thank you so much for the support. Peace.